everybody. Um, we're going to be going to Genesis, which is like a really easy book in the Bible to find, in that it's right at the very beginning. Um, and uh, the theme of this morning is God's masterpiece. Now, I know that those of you who know Jesus, you know the answer to this question, this statement about who is God's masterpiece or what is God's masterpiece. Um, any ideas? We don't have any ideas, right? We have no idea as Christians. Oh my goodness, people. <laughs> and what we've seen and what we've heard this morning is God doing what God does with the people that he loves with all his heart. Um, and I'm going to talk about God's masterpiece, but I know you already know the answer, but I'm hoping that by the end of it, we will see it not just as a, a thing that we kind of know in our head, but where it positions us this morning and where it places us this morning and how God sees us. Now, I remember the first time I ever encountered the mighty Victoria Falls. Any of you been to Victoria Falls? A few people. It's, it's incredible. It spans 1,700 meters across the Zambezi River. Every single minute, 500 million liters of water cascade over that waterfall every single minute. People in Zambia and Zimbabwe, they don't call it Victoria Falls. That was the name that David Livingstone gave it. They call it Mosi Oatunya which means the smoke that thunders because the spray from that falls rises 400 meters above the waterfall. It's the smoke that thunders. And I remember the day Nick and I stood there with two very little boys. We were just starting on our adventure, our Zambian ex adventure of extended life there on the backdrop of maybe some concerns from friends and family that maybe we were taking the children somewhere that would mean that they would end up not being able to fulfill their opportunities because we were taking them away for the UK and we were taking them somewhere else and maybe they would end up lacking in their future because of it. And I understand the concerns, but as I stood on the bridge that day and we were absolutely wet through to the skin from the spray from that mighty Victoria Falls. The bridge was shaking with the power and the thunder was deafening. It was a glory to God in the highest moment. And I knew then we weren't lacking anything. We were gaining absolutely everything. But that's a different story altogether. We have in Genesis, right at the very beginning, a glimpse of creator God displaying his glory. And if you've, uh, well, that was one thing. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and we have been in awe of his creation ever since. Any of you seen the northern lights? Yep. I never have. Spectacular. Was it a glory to God in the highest moment? Unbelievable. 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 Have any of you seen a full moon on a winter's evening? Yes. yes. Is it a glory to God in the highest moment? You go, look at the moon. What about a field of sunflowers? Look at that. Isn't it a glory to God in the highest moment? Look at that. Graham, you're doing a grand job. Moving on to the Grand Canyon. I've never seen this. But look at that. Any of you seen the Grand Canyon? Neil, how does it compare? Amazing. Amazing. Did you stand on the edge going, wow. You went down it. What about the intricate detail of a ladybird's spots? Every single one completely unique. No two ladybirds the same. Glory to God in the highest. What about the Great Barrier Reef? I've never been there. I've heard it's spectacular. Anybody been? What's it like, Ros? Spectacular. spectacular. No idea. What about Mount Everest? Anybody been up there? No, of course you haven't. It takes training. What about this one? I love this one. What about a meerkat? Aren't they the most extraordinary of animals? This family of meerkats must have posed for the photograph. 
Look at that. Glory to God in the highest. What about, did you know, I mean, Dylan, is Dylan here this morning? Down at 146. Oh, hi, guys at 146. What about, I'm kind of glad he's not here because I probably won't get it right, but what about the buzzy bee? They tell us that if the buzzy bee goes out, goes out of extinct existence, becomes extinct, the whole of our ecosystem will go to pot because of that. A tiny little fluffy thing. Glory to God in the highest. Don't you just want to say it? Glory to God in the highest. But, as is the case with every great composer and every great artist or choreographer, there is only room for one masterpiece. That one piece that is the most excellently done of all things. That one piece which is their greatest work of great works. That one outstanding creative thing of skill and depth. The one piece that most reflects the capacity and the imagination and the skill and the craftsmanship of the master himself. Look at yourself. Amazing. The piece that most expresses his thoughts and his ideas. The piece that most helps us to see him as king of kings and lord of lords as his likeness is most expressed in every paint stroke, art, everything. Van Gogh, he painted a great many works. I think this is the next picture up there, Graham. But this apparently is his masterpiece. I don't understand it, frankly. Um, anybody art critics or whatever? Yeah, sorry. Art critics, do you get it? I've no idea why that would be a masterpiece. It looks like something that um, Sammy could draw. But apparently it is the piece of art that most expresses who he was as an artist, Starry Night. He didn't actually ask my permission about what I thought about his painting before it became his masterpiece. In fact, nobody in the art critic world has ever asked me my opinion about what I think about that. It is just the masterpiece. It is a matter of fact. I don't know how to pronounce this, but uh, this is the next one. Guernica. What is it called? Guernica. You see? I don't even know how to say it. Apparently, this is Picasso's masterpiece. According to Google, this is the one. Mozart's is the Jupiter Symphony. Any of you heard of the Jupiter Symphony? No idea. Never heard, I listened to it the other day. I've never heard of it in my life. Never heard it. And I'm quite interested to know that there are no words to sing and there's no chord sheet that you can use to strum along to. And yet those three things are the one thing that most expresses their thoughts and ideas, the composers and the artists that drew that. And here we find in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Am I clicking on this too much? Am I spitting? Is it all right? God said... In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he says, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created the male and female, he created them. Nick mentioned that last week. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 says this, The Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man began to live. And I want you to get into your mind the incredible imagery that is here. Up until now, God had spoken the world into being. As he spoke, the world was created. But in the case of mankind, he steps down and he gathers the dust with his own hands and he begins to mold and to make with his own hands, forming, putting together very specifically and very carefully. And when it was exactly how he wanted it to be, he stooped even lower. Now, I'm a first aid instructor, so I know what it is like to give someone mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. You have to come very, very close. But the Bible says that after he had molded and shaped, God stooped even lower and breathed his own life into mankind's nostrils. And when he had done that, he stepped back after six incredible days of creativity 
He stepped back and he said, I'm done now. And he rested. He didn't rest because he was tired. He rested because he was done. That's it. This is the perfect thing. Glory to God in the highest. And I love the finality of this. Nothing more to add. Nothing to change. To remove or tweak or consider. He was done. We were like him. Made in his image. Now it was very good. Some of you this morning are imagining that is the case for everybody else out there except you. That is the case for the whole of humanity. <coughs> made in the image of God. Brought to life through the breath of God. Every single one of us seated here today. Yeah, but not me. No, not me. Yes, you. Every single person. Now, we all know that this isn't the end of the story and that fear and sin and failure and weakness and sickness have all marred the image of God in us. But I want to just encourage you this morning, again, with Katie's testimony and... Uh, Katie and Katie. The Katie's <laughs> testimony and the other testimonies that we've heard that day that today, that we cannot, because the image of God isn't something that we got for ourselves or something that we earned or a quality that we possess and only certain people have it. It was something that made humanity what it is. And if we didn't give it to ourselves and it's nothing that we possess, we cannot lose it even if things have come along and marred the image of God in us. I am made in the image of God full stop. Now, I know stuff has come in. That's why I gave my life to Jesus all those years ago. I know that there are things in my life that have come in and marred and distorted and disfigured the image of God within me. And yet underneath, still underneath, once a masterpiece, always a masterpiece. Is that right? Some of you are not sure. Is a masterpiece... Still a masterpiece if fire and flood damage it. Yes. Yes, because it's a condition. It was created that way. It was a masterpiece because it was made that way. Fire and flood come in and suddenly everybody springs into action because, oh my goodness, we need to do something to restore that masterpiece back to what it was supposed to look like. Remember when the, is it, was it two years ago, the, is it the Louvre in France burnt down? Notre Dame. I've said that several times. Yeah, Notre Dame burnt down. And everybody, in fact, it made headline news above everything else that was going on in the world. And that was because this incredible masterpiece, this incredible thing of beauty had burnt down and suddenly all the restorers, millions and millions and millions of pounds, poured into restoring this incredible masterpiece. Nobody said, right, you know what, fire and flood has come, that's it, bish, bash, bosh, throw it, roll it all up and throw it away. That's not what you do with a masterpiece. You call in the restorers. You call in the restorers, come, let's try and work out how we take it back to the original condition, even though it's been marred and tarnished and it's covered in fire and soot and whatever it is. And it's true for us. I am made in the image of God. I am his masterpiece. When people tell you that we are just like all the other animals, we're not. We're not like all the other animals. All the other animals are created beings. Nobody stooped down and breathed life into them. That's what makes humankind humankind. We are incredible. Some of you are going, yes, but I'm not. I can hear you. I can hear you. All that stuff didn't destroy who we were. It marred it and distorted it and twisted it. But basically, fundamentally, in the core of who we are, we have been created in the image of God. And his life is in us. So the restorer. Who is our restorer? You sound really nervous this morning. <laughs> Is it Jesus? I think the answer is Jesus. I'm, I'm not really sure if it's... I think it's Jesus. I think because we're Christians, I think the answer is supposed to be Chris, Jesus. Have you heard about that little boy who, um, who <laughs> went to Sunday school and somebody described something, you know, what is fluffy and got a long tail and grey and all of that, and he said, um, I, 
think, how does, it, how does he say it? I know the answer is Jesus. I know the answer should be Jesus, but it sounds like a squirrel to me. <laughs> That's what it is coming across this morning. I think the answer is Jesus because we're in church and everything comes down to Jesus. But actually, I, it sounds like a squirrel to me. Who is our restorer? Yeah. Katie, when you came up to the front here, Katie, when you came up to the front here and you declared about yourselves all the things that have marred and distorted and disfigured the basic image of God in you that he put in you, you did nothing for yourselves, who is it that came alongside you and said, do you know what, I'm going to take you back to your original condition? Who was it? Jesus. 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 The rest of you are all nervous. You think I'm, you're going to, just going to pick on me in a minute. I might do. It's Jesus. Jesus came along and he didn't say, um, oh gosh, I can't do anything with this. I'm too far gone for me, guys. Or, um, you know, all the rest are made in God's image, but, you know, God kind of messed up with you. Jesus is the reason. The reason Jesus came was to redeem us and restore us and renew us. He came as a master restorer and he looks and he says, I know that the image of God is under all this stuff because it, that's, that's, the, that's humankind. It's under all this stuff and sin and fear and failure. But just give me a moment. Just give me some time. Just give me your willingness. Just bring me yourself and I will sit and I will carefully and painstakingly pick away and add touches here, there and everywhere. And bit by bit by bit, you will begin to see the image of God that is there already. You'll begin to see it for yourself. Hallelujah. You know those moments, don't you, when you see it for yourself. Suddenly you, maybe you've had an issue with something all your life and suddenly you realize it's gone. <gasps> Because Jesus, the restorer, I'm going to work at this bit by bit by bit. And you're going to see my image that is already there. I'm going to make it visible. No idea where I am on my notes. <laughs> the master himself says, I know what this is supposed to look like. Allow me to make you look like the image that is already inside you. I love it. When people that don't believe in God don't understand that actually, whether they believe in God or not, they're still made in his image. It's a fact. Yeah, I know, but I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. Doesn't change who you are. Doesn't change your core. I know, but I don't believe in anything that you're talking about. I really don't believe in God. There is no God. Well, I'm really sorry to tell you because you're walking around carrying his image. It's just covered by stuff. And when we become believers, what we are saying to Jesus is, I surrender to you, deal with the stuff that is marring and distorting the image of God that is already inside me. It's a fact. Yeah, no, but I don't feel it. I don't feel like... Did he ask your permission? Okay, so when you feel like it, then you can be made in my image. And when you don't feel like it, then you don't have to be made in my image. He says, it's just a fact. Whatever you feel like this morning. He didn't ask your permission when he made you. He doesn't ask your permission when he calls you a masterpiece. He is the master and he decides. He decides who is his masterpiece. And I'm sorry to tell you that that's you. Whether you like it or whether you don't. He really is not interested in changing his opinion on who I am. I wasn't going to show this video, but I think I might. Can I just put that video up? I love it. You'll see. I don't know whether you'll see why I'm showing it. Are you amazing? Say it with a big voice. You, Andrea, you are amazing. <laughs> are you amazing? Say it with a big voice. You, Andrea, you are amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. Auntie Erica, you are amazing. I did have to prompt him. Did you notice? I said to him, say, Auntie Erica, you are amazing. And then I had to say to him, say it in a big voice. Auntie Erica, you are amazing. And the reason I love this is because every year it comes up on my Facebook reminder. And it just, do you know what? I am amazing. 
But as are every single one of you seated in here. It's not a special thing for special people. It is just the nature of God in you, his breath in you, a masterpiece made in his image, in his likeness, like nothing else in all creation. Auntie Eka, you are amazing. And that's for you, and for you, and for you. I wish I could have put, got him to do all your names. We'd have been here a very long time. Some of you are saying, yeah, but not me. It's just a fact. All these other things have come in to mar and distort, but Jesus in his grace carefully comes alongside and he begins to pick away and paint away and brush away and smooth away and restore this and restore that and change this and change that. And one day we stand back and we look and we say, oh my God, you are amazing. Glory to God in the highest. When was the last time you looked at yourself in the mirror without a critical view and said, glory to God in the highest. Look at what you've made. Auntie Aka, you are amazing. When was the last time? When was the last time you said, because we do this, we think it is humility to rubbish ourselves. We think it's not humility, it's actually pride. It's false humility, because what it says is, God, you don't know what you're talking about. And God, you are telling lies, because this doesn't apply to me. That's what it means. It's not humility. To stand and say, I am who I am by the grace of God, made in the image. Oh, yes, I know. You can tell me to the cows come home all the things currently that are marring my life, that are distorting the image of God in me. I know all the rubbish that I carry. But basically, bottom line, Auntie Aka, you are amazing because of Jesus. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you. So the, the restorer comes along. No idea where I am. I knew this would happen. The, master, the restorer comes along, and what we do is we get fixated on the stuff that is marring. We get fixated on the stuff that is rubbish, the stuff that we know shouldn't be there, the stuff when you've been a Christian a long time and you do that thing you know you shouldn't do and you should know better. Anybody else like that or is it just me? Liz, your hand went straight up. (laughs) We, we, We ought to know better. Graham, thank you for being honest. Those of you that didn't put your hand up, just put your hand up now and be done with it. Christians for a long time and we still do the things that we know we shouldn't do or think the things we shouldn't think and all of that and I get all of that and we become fixated on this and we become fixated on on all that is rubbish and all that is wrong and all that we should change and all, all of that stuff. What we need to become fixated on is the restorer. We need to become fixated on his hands as he changes and tweaks and whatever and every now and again he might say to you, I'd get the job done a lot quicker if you'd stop throwing black paint over there every single time I change that bit, and we have to change that. Let's stop fixating on old things. Isaiah 43, any of you do Lexio 365? I think the passage um, at the beginning of a year was from Isaiah 43 where it says, um, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. The old has gone and the new has come. Is that a statement of fact? Is it a statement of fact? Okay. Is he saying, I wish the old had gone and I wish the new had come? He says, no, I'm doing a new thing. The old has gone. The new has come. And then what does he say? He asks a question. Do you not perceive it? Why do you think he asks that question? Do you not perceive it? Sorry, what was that voice? Because we know we won't believe it. I've just told you the old has gone and the new has come, but do you not perceive it? He wants us to see it. That this is the pro- this is just a matter of fact. This is what Jesus has done. We need to start perceiving it. We need to start owning it. The world is an awesome place, but even more awesome than the world that we live in are the people that are in it. Ephesians 2 verse 10, and I have no idea where I am, says, I am his masterpiece, created in his image. Would you like to repeat that? Do you want to say it again? 
oh yeah, but what about that? What about that thing? What about that thing? What about that situation? What about that relationship? What about this? What about that? What's the answer? I? Oh no, you see, now you've all lost your confidence. <laughs> so you're doing exactly what I'm saying. Oh gosh, maybe that's changed it. That's, oh, that's obviously changed it. I've stopped being his masterpiece now. Now I'm just a failure and I'm rubbish and I've made a mistake. And Am I or am I not his masterpiece? Okay, let's, let's say it in a big voice, shall we? <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> Come on, guys. If we're going to get it to go from here to here, we're going to have to put some effort in, aren't we? Right, after three. One, two, three. Okay, well, what about that issue in your life? wrong. Is he telling a lie about your life? No. Is he speaking the truth about your life? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I think it's sunk in. <laughs> I am a masterpiece created in his image. I am the apple of his eye. You are the apple of his eye. What else are we? Precious, loved, known, seen, accepted, restored, redeemed, healed, forgiven. <laughs> The mighty Victoria Falls, more than the Northern Lights, more than the butterflies, ladybird dots, more than the Grand Canyon, more than any of the seven wonders of the world, more than anything that you could ever walk on, see with your eyes, hear with your ears, look through a window at, more than the moon in the sky, more than the sun, more than the stars, more than absolutely everything. You, made in the image of God with his breath living inside you, you are the apple of his eye. You are his greatest masterpiece. You are the thing that he looks at and he says, you represent me. You are more like me than anything else in all creation. I love you and I cherish you and I'm working on you and I'm changing you. Glory to God in the highest. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. I'm a conqueror. Glory to God in the highest. And you know, when we grasp that truth and we stop being the kind of people that go, oh no, not me. When we do that, that's unbelief. And we say to God, I don't actually believe your word. I know that you're saying it about somebody else. And I really love you that you're saying it about somebody else. But it doesn't apply to me. What we are saying to him is that he's telling lies. The Bible tells me is that my God is not a person. He's not a man that he should lie. He speaks the truth. And he says about you, oh my word, when I created you masterpiece. Yes, I know that there is stuff that needs to be done. I know you need to reflect me more. I know that we need to deal with some things in your life. I know that it will be an ongoing process of restoration, but whatever happens and however it works, you are my masterpiece. Glory to God in the highest. Just to finish, have you heard that wonderful quote? It's not in the Bible. It says, beauty is in the, the eye of the beholder. Have you heard that? Yeah. Have any of you ever used it? Yeah. It's a rubbish quote. <laughs> it's a rubbish quote. I analysed it because when you look up that word, it's rubbish. Because what it, oh, my earring. See, that's what enthusiasm does. Rips your earring out your ear. It says, because it says that beauty doesn't exist on its own, it has to be something that is observed. That's what it says. Beauty... Your beauty, your masterpiece-ishness exists because the God created it to be. To be seen in the glorious world around us and much more than that. Beauty exists because he created it in you. Glory to God in the highest. So next time you stand and you see something spectacular, just remember, Auntie Acre. You are amazing. And then put your name there. I want to read this over you just to finish. Psalm 139 says, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. That makes me smile. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. 
How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully and skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. Hallelujah. You saw who you created me to be before I even became me. Before I'd even seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. It tells me he has purpose over your life. Oh, listen to this. Every single moment you are thinking of me. And you think you're alone and that nobody cares and that you're isolated in your pain and your sorrow and nobody would even notice. He says, every single moment. Wow. Remember the 500 liters of water going over Victoria Falls. Every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires towards me are more than the grains of sand on every seashore. Glory to God in the highest. And when I awake each morning, how does that end? You are still with me. Yeah, but... I'm on my own. No, you're still with me. God, I invite your searching gaze into my heart. Examine me through and through. Find out everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares. In other words, restore. See if there is any path of pain I'm walking on. And lead me back to your glorious, everlasting ways. The path that brings me back to you. You are incredibly made in the image of God. With the breath of him within you. Glory to God in the highest. Amen.